Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a brand new feature coming in C-Sharp 11 called UTF-8 Strings Literals. Now the feature itself is very very small, however, depending on how much you're dealing with UTF-8 strings, and spoiler alert, if you're doing anything on the web, it's everywhere, then this can be a very handy small feature. So I'm going to show you what it is, how it works, and how it might be relevant to you. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, I just want to take a moment before the video for a quick announcement. I started making these videos three years ago, and three years later, the channel has grown beyond any of my expectations. Now I'm at a point where the channel is sustainable and I can do this full time thanks to you watching the videos and buying my courses. To celebrate this milestone, I'm offering the first 200 of you a 20% discount code on nickchapsas.com on any of my courses except for the bundle. So if you're waiting for a discount to grab a course, this is the time. And I increased it from 100 to 200 just because of how important this milestone is for me. So use discount code full time and the first 200 of you will get a 20% discount. Again, thank you so, so much. I couldn't have done this without you. Now back to the video. So let me show you what I have here. I have a simple console application and I want to show you first that this is a .NET 7 application using the preview version of the language. And this is because this is currently in preview. Now keep in mind that just like with anything in preview, this is subject to change. And I'm going to talk about how it might change, but the fundamental idea behind the feature will stay the same, so you don't have to worry about it changing too much. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to go ahead and have a piece of text here, and I'm going to say content length. Now, if you're sent any request on the web ever, you would see that the response has a content length header and that is effectively a key value pair so it gives you a number after that and that number is how big the http body is so you know how far to read now the web is built on top of utf8 strings however the string type of c sharp and i want to be explicit to show you the utf16 encoding not the 8 meaning that if you're dealing with a lot of web stuff you might be dealing with conversions heavily for example if i do new utf Eight, you see the JSON writer and the JSON reader that the system.text.json has to provide very high performance UTF-8 encoded JSON conversions because C-Sharp itself is using UTF-16. Now that means that when you write code that deals with that encoding, you have to convert back and forth to the encoding itself. So if I want to get the bytes, for example, and I'm just going to do a byte array of text bytes over here, I would have to say encoding.utf8 to make sure that's the encoding and then get bytes text. But this is not efficient at all. There's actually allocations here and it's, I mean, it's not slow, it's nanoseconds, but this is not efficient at all. There's more allocation hiding in that method and it's actually not really slow in the context of nanoseconds, but definitely slow for something that is clearly a constant and should be done in compile time, not runtime. And that's the problem this feature will be solving. So now, instead of having to use encoding.udf8.getBytes, which by the way, means that people who write that type of code have to do something like this, I'm just going to have an example class here. So the first one is you might have a private static read only field with the a byte array itself. So you might say text bytes and do an encoding.utf8.getbytes nick and effectively cache it. So it is allocated on the heap on startup, but you only have that single allocation reused across your program. So it's kind of fine. Or the other thing you might do is say static read only byte array text uh, bytes again, and you might have the byte array itself directly here. So if you know what this translates to in a byte form, um, then you might say 57, 65, 65 and uh, 64. So these are the two things you might do, but they both will allocate on the heap. And in case you're wondering, no, you cannot use span here. So if I try to do span byte, this won't work because a span can only be used in a ref struct. And this is a class. And how many times will you actually get the chance to use this in a ref struct? It's not that common. So this is a bit of a problem. So what is C sharp 11 changing? Well, they're adding the ability to say byte array text bytes new equals and simply say content type from a string to the byte array. 
Now, this does not work, or at least it looks like it's not working on the front end because Rider is using the version that doesn't support it yet. However, if I go to the terminal and I do .NET run, this builds. There is no problem. Uh, there's a warning because this is not used, but I can go ahead and say console.writeline text bytes new dot length. And if I go ahead and I run it again, then as you can see, 16 bytes, it is being converted implicitly from a string, a UTF-8 string literal to the byte array. Now, granted, this has to be a UTF-8 string literal. And if it's not, the compiler will identify it and throw a compilation error. But if it is, now you can do that. And it doesn't stop there. You can also say a couple more things. Let me just comment this one out and this one before I show you. So first you can say span byte if you want to go even deeper over here. So if I do that and I run it again, this compiles, this works 16. And then I can also do, of course, read only span. So this also works. Comment this out, go back, run it. Voila, 16 bytes from that UTF-8 string literal just like that so so simple the thing that might change is they might add a suffix that looks like this so you might have a u8 in the end of the string to indicate that this is a utf8 string so you can have an implicit conversion because if i just had this with var then obviously this is a string it's not whatever i wanted it to be so there won't be any implicit conversion however if i did this and i had u8 then that would be converted into a byte array actually so this would be like that and you could still apply span and read only span if you wanted to now how much of a difference this can really make well let me show you i'm gonna go ahead and bring in our trusty friend benchmark.net and i'm going to run a simple benchmark and the benchmark will look something like this let me just say new class over here and say udf8 benchmarks here we go and i'm just going to add the memory diagnoser because it is important and then i'm going to have a couple of methods one of them is getting the bytes from the constant through encoding.utf8.getbytes and the other one is getting it directly from the implicit conversion over here and please note that I'm using a read-only span here not a span and not a byte array this is intentional and it has to do with allocations so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do a .NET run in release mode and see what I get from the benchmarks so results are back and let's see what we have here so as you can see the first one the get bytes one the one that uses the encoding.utf8.getbytes is taking 14 nanoseconds and it allocates 40 bytes in memory. The second one, which is just doing the implicit conversion over here, is fast. I don't know what's less than nanosecond and allocates no memory. Now that's because we're using read-only span. Like I said, if I change this and I used a span here instead of read-only span, then this would also have the same amount of allocations as the first one. And let's see why that is the case. So what I have over here is sharplab.io, which allows me to see the lowered code, or in other terms, how high level C sharp is being converted to low level C sharp to see how the feature is being implemented. So if I paste these lines of code over here and move myself over here, then as you can see, the first one is just calling the method nothing fancy, but then you can see that the read only span one is using the unsafe.as pointer and uses that as a parameter. And we have 16 here because that's the length of the content type thing. So to prevent the allocation, this actually turns this into an unsafe read-only span, not even just a read-only span, which is very interesting to me because you don't explicitly turn on unsafe for your code, but now you have technically unsafe in your code without even knowing so that's pretty cool um, and the other one with the span as you can see it is initializing the array over here heap allocation and then it's using the initialize array runtime helper to do the rest and yeah this opcode is not supported yet so we can't exactly see what's going on but you can see from allocating a new array that it is quite different in nature so what do you think about this feature do you have the use case to use it does it make sense to you does it not leave a comment down below and let me know what you think that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making these videos possible if you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, sharing the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.